it is like arriving via the secret passage. Leaving the main highway a few miles from Seven Oaks, a country lane overhung by trees takes the visitor down the valley through the Kent countryside, past Ivy Hatch to a property hidden from the public gaze. This is Item Moat, a 13th century moated manor house that remarkably has survived for over 700 years. It is not a grand mansion, but in an unforced and natural way it astonishes everyone by its quiet charm. Owned by several families, it fell into disrepair in the 19th and 20th centuries and was in a poor state. Eventually, it was saved for the nation by the National Trust, who have undertaken a costly 15-year conservation program funded partly by public donations, now completed. Item Moat is a magical place of surprises around every corner and loved by its many visitors. My very good friend of long standing, Richard, took me there and we just about made it as I was navigating. We did the house tour, unfortunately it wasn't too busy. There is much to see. Photographically I had to deal with high contrast, and I will explain my technique after the tour, and it is probably not what you think. So first, let's take a romantic journey back through the centuries. I am using the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and the 12 to 100 Pro lens, regarded by many photographers as a classic combination. Both have image stabilizers. Perfect! I have to hand hold as tripods are not permitted inside National Trust properties. I use the camera's electronic finder to spot meter, which is more accurate than an optical finder, particularly for high contrast situations. I spot meter near a highlight so that it is still slightly overexposed, allowing underexposure in dark areas. The magic starts in Adobe Lightroom. I do not use HDR, finding it too manufactured. Neither do I use filters. Even if they do what it says on the box, you are stuck with the result. 
The creative process never stands still, and I certainly keep changing my mind. Therefore, I avoid any photographic process that I cannot go back from. If you save to RAW and archive the file, any changes made in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop are saved separately in a sidecar file, allowing you to change your mind six months later and start all over again. I posted some of my images on Facebook. This one received many comments asking how I took it. So I will use it as an example for my post-production technique in Lightroom based on experience and my eyes, not numbers or graphs. You have been warned. The original out-of-camera shot may come as a shock. However, note that I have successfully handheld the camera at a fifth of a second at f4, 200 ISO. It doesn't make much of a difference, but I changed the color profile to landscape. It beefs up the colors a touch. Also, I change the white balance to daylight so that areas affected by daylight don't turn blue. Exposure increased. Although parts of the images now look grossly overexposed, the raw file gives me sufficient flexibility for correction. Contrast increased a bit, not too much. Otherwise, it looks overcooked. Now I take the highlights right down to correct overexposed parts of the image without affecting shadows, which I increase a bit, not too much, otherwise noise will raise its ugly head. Now for a bit of fine tuning. Whites right down and blacks up a bit. Now we are getting close to what I want. For the finishing touch I increase clarity and vibrance, but not saturation, as it makes the image look artificial. Vibrance is more subtle. Further down the panel, I found that Auto in Transform Upright straightens the image. This does not always work, so use the sliders instead. Let's now compare the adjusted image with the original out of camera. All changes made in Lightroom or Photoshop are saved to a linked sidecar file that does not overwrite the original RAW file. This is important. I make a JPEG copy for clients and archive the RAW and sidecar files. I reduce the resolution for YouTube, but publishers get a full resolution JPEG. If they feel that it is oversaturated, I can return to the RAW file, make changes, and give them a revised JPEG. This is why I do not overcommit myself in camera, particularly if changes can be made successfully in post-production. After the house tour and a visit to the cafe, Richard and I did a short walk to Stone Street and back. On the way, Richard spotted this cow parsley, so being a swine I nicked his picture. He did take me home afterwards. On the other hand, he could have dumped me at a railway station or a bus stop for stealing his shot. <laughs>